Hello guys and welcome back. Since uh, the last episode, I've repainted these in a uh, satin finish and they look heaps better um, than, the, than the matte did. And um, yeah, the finish is just a lot better on them. So happy with that. Gonna have to take the matte off the grill as well uh, and the badge just to make it all look more like the same. Um, sort of replicates this finish, which looks heaps better. It just looks a little bit off with the matte. So um, we'll take that off and repaint that. Um, and then the same on this side as well. This looks heaps better, a lot cleaner and um, yeah, more, uh, I suppose, shiny like the rest of the car is uh, with the chrome. So yeah, that'll be for next time, um, which is just this one here. Same brand, it's just um, the glossy type, which is, yeah, heaps better. So today, we've got the light off, and we're going to be wrapping the chrome trim around the lights. Now to get that one off is easy. All right, so I've obviously got the boot closed at the moment, but same, you can see what I'm doing. So there's two 10 mil bolts here and here, um, and you just obviously undo them. And then there's just some little retaining clips here. And, um, just pull on the light, but be gentle, because obviously you got your uh, harness here um, which goes into here twist this bit off and then just unplug that little clip there and then the light will come out so very easy all right those little prongs there are the bits I'm talking about that clip into the actual body of the car and uh, it looks as though we're gonna have to remove them screws to be able to take the chrome off so give that a go and see what happens all right so there you have it Easy as that, and the chrome piece comes off. There's literally just them three screws, and this will come out easy as. So just like everything, you need to give it a good clean up first, because obviously chrome attracts a lot of fingerprints and marks and stuff, so once we get all that off, we'll be ready to wrap. All right, so once you've got your chrome all cleaned up, I'm wearing gloves just so I can actually handle it and um, not get fingerprints on it, which is a pretty good idea. Um, once you've done that, then you want to grab your wrap. Now I've got a decent amount of it, a good couple meters, which will be enough to do the exterior of the car. And also looks pretty similar to the um, to the satin I've done as well. So hopefully you won't be able to really notice a difference. Actually, we'll go and have a look, see how it compares. So it is a matte, although. Does have a bit of shine to it in the light, so yeah, it's definitely not the same as that. Um, let's see if we can sort of get this in the light. Yeah, pretty similar, so don't think you'll really notice. So once you get your wrap, uh, grab your Stanley knife and just cut off a, a decent sized bit of it, and yeah, we'll begin. All right, so this is just some 3M wrap, so it's decent quality and should um, hold up. So. I've just cut off a bit that's about this big and that'll be enough to do the whole thing because um, it's only, you know, it's not a very big bit. So we'll peel this off. Alright, so we're peeling this off. Be careful obviously because you don't want it to attach back to itself because the, uh, the back side is a bit sticky. Uh, there we are. Now wrap is pretty forgiving, so um, yeah, be careful, but you don't have to stress too much about it. Um, so basically, ideally, if I had a bigger workbench, you just want to sort of grab it like this, sort of stretch it a little bit, and then place it over like that and pull down on it. Now don't stress too much if it's a little bit creased or whatnot, like this. So you can just slowly peel that side up a little bit. So it removes the crease and then pull it. And sort of just mold it into the shape that you're wanting. As you can hear, it's quite sticky. So, Again, just like painting, it's all in the prep work, so 
Yeah, just try and get it as best as you can. These sort of little creases here, don't worry too much about that, the heat gun will remove it. Now, you can also spray whatever it is that you're wrapping with just a bit of water, and then that can also help when it comes to um, finalising the placement, because you'll be able to move it around a bit, but when it's just little things like this, it doesn't matter too much. If you're definitely doing like a bonnet or doors or something like that, you definitely want to because you want to get that 100% right. But when it's just little pieces, yeah, you can be pretty, um, you know, a bit rough with it, I suppose. Alright, so we're slowly getting there. Still not 100% happy. I need more hands, would be great. All right, we'll see how that goes, but that doesn't look too bad. Um, we'll get the heat gun, we'll hit it with some heat and just see how it reacts. Um, and if not, we'll, we'll just try again, it's no big deal. So I've just got the Ryobi heat gun, which is um, obviously a battery one. Um, it's got about 20 minutes on a full battery, so it's okay. Obviously, um, these are only the uh, 2.5 amp hour batteries. The 5 amp hour ones would be a lot better, but yeah, it's perfect for doing these little jobs. Right, so grab our piece and we'll just heat it up a little bit. Just going over it. Getting a bit of heat into it, just, just to help conform the shape. Now you've got to be pretty careful because this thing puts out quite a bit of heat um, and you don't want it to be actually melting the wrap so you don't want to spend too much time in one place. As you can see that's starting to get very moldable now um, yeah you just want to be a bit careful but it cools pretty quickly so see if we can see there we go you just push on the little creases like you would if you're like applying a phone case or something like that after you've heated it and they, they just come out fairly easily um, with the bigger ones not so much so you just want to Peel it off, try again. Also, I probably should have heated the wrap up uh, a little bit to begin with, just to make it a little bit more moldable and pliable. But we live and we learn. So there we go. You want to just pull it around so it makes a nice sharp edge, because you don't want any creases. You sort of want to pull it back on itself so it's um, yeah, creating a nice tight edge. See if we can push them bits out. Probably gonna have to apply a little bit more heat down onto this end. Just to get these final creases out. There we go, that's looking heaps better now. So there you are, pretty much done now. We'll hit this back section with a little bit more heat just to get um, the back edge of it bit tighter. Like I said, you don't need a heap of heat. And then, yeah, just, I'm just using my finger just to push them out. There's a little bit of a crease here that's not really wanting to. Might need a bit more heat on that part. And then at the end, I'm just gonna wanna pull it tightly around. Again, to create that nice sharp point. There we go, that's looking pretty good actually, not too bad at all. Um, so we'll just heat up this little section here a bit more. Mm, 
just push that out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Push out. Obviously you want to push it to the end because it's basically just um, like trapped air, really. A little bit tricky with the gloves on because you obviously can't really feel what you're doing so much. There we go. It's come away pretty well. It's not so bad. Just go along this edge a bit. Just to help shape it a bit more. And there's the finished result. Not too bad for, um, you know, five minutes work, I suppose. So yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna move on to the cutting part. All right, so once you've gone around and you've made sure that you're pretty happy with how it looks, just wanna pull the wrap out um, so it's not all sort of bunched up like this. Make sure you pull it all nice and tight and it'll just make it a lot easier to cut as well. So basically what you're gonna do, you take a razor blade, in my case I'm just gonna take a Stanley knife um, and I'm just gonna sort of go around the edge and also pull the, um, the wrap in along the side as I go along. So you just wanna pull it out and just make your incision you want to leave a little bit of wrap over overhanging just so then you can help to sort of secure it along the end so we just go along and we, I'm not fully cutting in until I get my hands ready in position to help pull just so then I know that I'm cutting where I want to be cutting and it's nice and tight and just makes it easier for the blade the Stanley knife isn't the sharpest, but it's doing the job. So as you can see, you start to, you know, remove the excess, obviously, and then you can go along the edge um, when you're done and um, just touch it up a little bit and make sure it's all nice and tight. So I'll finish this off and we'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, so we now have our finished piece, which uh, doesn't look too bad. So now we're just going to go back over again with a little bit of heat and just finish off the edges, tidy up little bits like that. Just fold them over and the same on this side as well. Just so then we can get a nice seal on this side. You want it something like this along the side like that. Obviously we've gone a little bit uneven here, but it'll work nonetheless. Um, and same on here as well. You want it to sort of just overlap a little bit so it helps to secure the wrap. Uh, the wrap. So again, back out with the heat. And just go along, heat it up hit up the edges. Obviously you want to work in small parts at a time, so just pick an end, heat that bit up, and then go from there. So just want to pull it, squeegee out the bits of air. Might have to um, sometimes just lift up your corners a little bit, give them a bit of a pull, and open them up a bit so the air can actually escape. Okay, so that corner actually sealed very well, so we'll get to that bit, but that's all right. Now, I'm no professional, so, you know, this is just all for educational purposes, but I think it actually looks all right. So I'll just lift up this corner where this bubble's at a bit. Just give it a bit of a lift and see if we can push that bubble out. That's quite annoying. There we go. Got it now. Push it out and then pull your corners, fold them in, push them down so they're nice and tight. Obviously these parts fit up pretty tightly anyway, so it'll help to hold it as well. Um, but yeah, that's not too bad. 
also do remember, you know, if you make little mistakes or whatnot and little imperfections and stuff on corners, don't worry about it too much because the light will help to hide a majority of it anyway. So it's mainly just the face of it you'll really want to be worrying about because that's the bit that'll be seen. All right, so that's not too bad. That's all right. Can I complain with that? Pretty decent. Um, so yeah, I'll just go along the corners a bit more, make sure they're nice and tight, and then we can refit to the light and see how it actually looks. All right, so that's it fixed back to the light. It's fairly good. There's a few little imperfections in it, but I mean, you won't notice it at a distance, and it's a four-wheel drive. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so yeah, no, it looks all right. I'll go fit it back up to the car and yeah, we'll see what it looks like. Health. So we've got the center chrome bit off, which you have to take off um, along with the, the middle lights as well. There's also an inside bracket here that's held in with some glue and also some screws, which I've now lost the majority of them, so that's awesome. Um, so yeah, you'll also have to take that bit off because obviously the, um, the rear tailgate um, assist or open um, button is also uh, integrated into this chrome piece so you'll have to take that off as well uh, otherwise yeah good luck trying to get it out um, so that's that's the way I did it so now we'll um, do the same process and yeah wrap these pieces up too all right so when you're taking these intermediate lights out um, all you've got to do is remove this plug you don't have to worry about this one on the uh, side tail lights you'll have to take this apart undo the little clip on the inside uh, but with these ones you just got to remove this one because uh, just makes it so much easier also the top of it has a seal that runs along in here just to help keep dust and water out so make sure you keep that and it goes back in that slot uh, which will be a little bit difficult when it comes to wrapping it because typically you put the wrap um, right over here so we might have to just cut it flush so we can actually get that to fit back in um, I'll do it over this to begin with and then see if I can still fit that and then um, then yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so now we've got both of the lights done. Now it's time to move on to the patrol um, garnish, I suppose. Um, so they weren't too bad. They were all right to do. Um, definitely a couple of little uh, hot chips for young players is um, start off um, just putting water on the chrome. It makes it so much easier to position it where you want it. Um, and then once you've got it set where you want and it's nice and tight, then hit it with the heat gun. Um, it'll dissolve or evaporate all the water um, and it'll just set it to where you want it. Um, so I found that that was a much easier way to do it um, when doing these bits. So yeah, now they've turned out not too bad. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go with the patrol bit because it um, has obviously the embossed letters um, and also a lip. In it so yeah we'll see how we go with that but should be okay so let's move on all right so as it turns out I don't have quite enough wrap to do that because it's actually quite a long piece um, I'm just short so I'm gonna have to order some more of this uh, but that's okay so in the meantime I'm just gonna spray it using the uh, new plastic dip I have and um, see how that looks on that so we'll uh, whip up the spray booth and we'll crack on with that. All right, so welcome to the spray booth. Just gonna grab our glossy plasti dip, which should be, shouldn't be too bad. Should look pretty similar, just for the meantime anyway, so I can put it all back together and it all sort of looks the same at least. So we'll give it a few coats and see what it looks like. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I think it'll turn out all right. Now, the trick with the plastic dip is you want to go on thick. Um, otherwise, yeah, getting it off will be a bit of a drama. So go on thick, um, but not thick enough that it's going to look like crap. So just a little tip for, for doing the plastic dip. Also, I just thought we'd run through how to uh, actually take that um, panel off for the boot. Um, so it is the next day. I ran out of time last night. I got a bit too dark, so uh, I still have this one left to, to go. Um, but got the rest of it done, which was good. 
I'm um, also in the process of taking off that um, patrol garnish as well just because um, <laughs> it was a bit hard to paint in the dark and I actually missed a couple of spots so I'll just have to go over it and redo it but that's no big deal. Um, so obviously we now can see the inside of the boot. It's got a lot of wires and crap going everywhere um, for like what three main things, boot release, light and the rear camera. Uh, so there's a lot going on here. Um, obviously lights as well, but you know. Um, so there's obviously these holes here, which are for these clips. These little plastic clips, which are in the boot here. So that's the like rear facing side. And then it just has um, a heap of plastic clips that you just need to pop out. Um, so be gentle, but um, yeah, you'll have to you know, apply a bit of force um, to actually get them out because they are in there quite good. Um, you don't have to stress about any wires or anything being on the actual uh, plastic bit. There's nothing on there, so go for your life. Um, but yeah, just be careful. Um, but it does all pop out um, eventually, so yeah, just be uh, patient with it. So we'll carry on, we'll get all this bit apart, take that light off, and then we'll be done. All right, so I've got that light done. Just waiting for that to dry now. I gave it another coat. Uh, so that's coming out nicely. Now this is the uh, insert that goes in that, which has your camera and your boot release as well. Um, now that's held in just by four screws and some glue, um, some like tape, um, adhesive tape stuff. So um, yeah, you'll have to be a bit aggressive when taking that off. Um, but yeah, you don't actually have to take the camera out and all that sort of business. That bit is separate to the um, to the actual garnish. So we've got the light surrounds done now. And um, yeah, they're looking pretty good. So that's not too bad. Get that bit together, put the boot back together, and then it'll be done. And there you have it. She's all back together, all wrapped. Nice and stealthy looking. So yeah, now the wrapping turned out pretty good. Um, a few little challenges here and there, but Otherwise, I save myself quite a lot of money doing it myself. So, um, yeah, even the gloss uh, plastic dip sort of does match the wrap as well. Um, it's a little bit darker because the wrap's actually a matte. Um, so, once I get some more wrap, I'll do the patrol um, garnish and then it'll all look the same. So, yeah, no, that doesn't look too bad at all. So um, in the next video, we'll go for door handles as well as the guard inserts as well. So that'll be in part three. All right, this will probably be a perfect time to end. Let's just start a terrain. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've got something out of today's video. Uh, it's actually been quite enjoyable doing some arts and crafts with the uh, patrol. So um, yeah, no, been quite good actually. Uh, quite happy with the result. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys have, have learnt something and um, yeah, give it a crack on your car and see how you go. You really can't break anything as long as you're just careful and you know, you're not reefing on things. Um, but yeah, no, it's actually turned out alright and I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. Like I said in the last video, you know, I'm saving myself thousands of dollars by doing it myself and it's really not hard. Um, you know, a couple of hours work and you know, sit down, have a beer, enjoy yourself, do a little bit of work on your car, make it look a little bit more stealthier. So, yeah, can't complain with that. So, yes, as I mentioned, in uh, the next video, we'll do the door handles, and we'll also do the bonnet vents as well, uh, the, the guard vents, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see how we go from there, and then probably move into the interior as well. So, yeah, cheers for watching, guys. I'll catch you at the next one.